candlelight and romantic dinners, children and playgrounds, wings and football games. These are all things that are typically associated with each other. But coffee and church? That's exactly the kind of atmosphere that Cross Point United Methodist Church was seeking for its new campus. So, what does coffee have to do with making disciples for the transformation of the world? Let's go find out and warm up. with Pastor Jason Mackey, who is the South Hanover campus pastor here at the coffee shop. And we're warming up with some nice lattes here. Yeah, buddy. So tell me, what is it about a coffee house that's going to lead more people to Christ? Well, um, a coffee house is relational. It's the kind of place that you want to be, you want to spend time, you want to talk, you want to make friends. And so we looked at the best way for making relationships in our community, and the coffee house was the answer. Okay. Why did you decide coffee house versus other places that you have relationships, a restaurant or a gym or something like that? That's a really good point. For us, in our context, a coffee house was what we needed. Um, we actually, when we looked at this strip mall, we considered what if we did a daycare? But we didn't think that we'd get as many relationships with people going that route. In the future, maybe we want to do an art studio. But for where we are, in order to build community in the South Hanover Township area, we knew that a coffee house is what the community needed. How do you implement Christian values into the coffee shop when you're not doing the church service? Uh, through the week, people see it in our baristas, they see it in our products, they see it in everything that we do. Um, you know, we have three main values that we instilled in the coffee house. We wanted to be green, which means we wanted to make sure we were environmentally responsible. We wanted to make sure we were using fair trade coffee so that we're giving our farmers a, a proper share uh, for what they're earning. And we also wanted to feature local industry as much as we could, everyone from our community. So that's one of the ways in our values, but also in our baristas. They, when you walk in the door, they know you. They want to say hi. They want to see how your day is going. They genuinely care. Instead of you being, you know, potential profit, you're actually a potential friend. Where do the profits go from the coffee? Well, so far we haven't made any profits, <laughs> um, but in the end we're hoping that this campus will be self-sustaining, that our coffee sales will match our rent and all of our other expenses, and any profits that we make we'd like to give back in missions, be it to our sister church in Sierra Leone or another mission that we reach into. Great. Can you tell us a little bit more about the worship part of it, which is back here? It's really cool. Uh, if you've never worshipped in the coffee house, you've got to try it. Uh, this whole place packs with people, about 130 people on a Sunday morning. The most we can fit is 155, and it's very contemporary. Um, we don't have an organ unless our keyboard player changes to the organ setting. Um, but it's really relaxed. People are invited to bring their coffee into worship. We uh, invite them to use their smartphones, a program called YouVersion, where they can look up the Bible and follow along with the teaching notes and submit uh, prayer requests. And, uh, you know, just encouraging people to hang out after worship in the sanctuary, in this entire space, to build friendships kind of takes worship to another level and almost makes it feel like a small group to a little bit. You said that the building and the development of this place actually had a lot to do with the gifts of your congregation. Um, yes. Can we go check it out? Absolutely, let's. So uh, how has the congregation helped you to create this space? I, they were really busy throughout this entire project. Uh, we very early started out by visiting National Community Church, Ebenezer's Coffee House in Washington, D.C. And uh, about a week after the trip, I had a congregant come up to me with about 20 drawings of what our worship space would look like. Turns out he was an architect. Wow. And so he designed the space from top to bottom. Uh, we had a team of ladies pick out all of our surfaces, every color, every texture that you see in the space, they picked out. We had a lighting person in the congregation that picked out all of our light fixtures so that it'd be just right. Um, our own worship team picked out uh, some of the, the worship equipment and the audio video that we were dealing with. Um, it really was a full congregational effort. 
What are some of the outreach programs that you have here? Well, we've tried to make use of the space as much as we could. Um, we have this beautiful 155-inch screen. So we've done a few movie nights showing um, mostly PG and G movies. Uh, the Blind Side was one of them that we showed. We have uh, also had open mic nights back here on stage. The last one we did had about 120 people here, which was really cool. And uh, we just encouraged them to play music that it has no derogatory language and no defaming lyrics. We really want to maintain the positive atmosphere of a church, that it's uplifting, but it can be secular music. We want to encourage them to express their artistic sides. Do you advertise those events at the worship service, or do you do it in the coffee shop? How do you get people to come to those? Both and. Uh, we get the word out every way that we can. Uh, we often put announcements in the worship folder, encouraging people to invite their friends, because if the church doesn't show up for the outreach, then there's no relationship to build. Uh, but we also advertise to the community. We have posters that we put into the coffee house. We send out mailers and flyers. Mr. Bob Subway, which is two doors up, he put 4,000 flyers in each sub that he sold. Oh, he wow. put a flyer for us. Um, so that's been huge. And social media. Uh, our website, the perkingpoint.com, and our Facebook page, Perking Point, has had a lot of likes, a lot of hits, and that's starting a lot of word of mouth amongst people. Great. Well, it's really neat to see a really different kind of worship service and an outreach to the community to try and get them to feel relationally involved with the church members. Um, so if you would like to learn more about his church, uh, you can check out my blog at sesquihannaexpress.blogspot.com. <laughs>